Ladies and gentlemen, uh, organizing committee, thank you for the possibility to present our results uh, of this project, Stereotactic Navigation for Rectal Surgery, right here. Um, Stereotactic navigation has been uh, developed and improved by neurosurgeons um, to navigate uh, perioperatively, not only through the patient with the instrument, but also through a CT scan in, in several directions to improve the quality of the surgery. So what are the fundamentals? Let's talk about that before we discuss our study. What are the fundamentals of uh, uh, image-guided surgery, stereotactic navigation? Well, we have to make a CT. We have to make imaging um, with um, what we do most commonly now with fiducials, skin markers, uh, to be able to register the, uh, the anatomic uh, entity in the three-dimensional room in the OR. And uh, we need to do this for the registration, but we also need high definition to navigate. And um, how do we register these fiducials in, in the three-dimensional space by means of infrared light that is most, most commonly used uh, nowadays? So here you see the fiducials and, um, in, uh, with the red uh, circle around it. And to register uh, an anatomic entity, we see these fiducials, we register these fiducials in the infrared light uh, to determine the position. After which we need to track also the patient during the operations when we do not use the fiducials anymore. And we track the patient with the patient reference, which you can see next to the uh, patient. And the instruments are also tracked uh, by means of the spheres, by the infrared system. So uh, with this uh, uh, system, with this technique, we can interoperatively track the instrument th in three directions, in the axial, in the transverse, and the sagittal direction. So we, so we know where we are with the instrument. So it has a proven advantage in neurosurgery, for example, in glyco glioma uh, resection. It has improved the quality. Uh, so, um, other types of sur surgeries um, uh, also have uh, thought about uh, maybe advantages of this stereotactic navigation, like uh, uh, pelvic surgery. Atala published in 2015 a, a case after which he uh, also uh, published a few cases to show the feasibility of stereotactic navigation in pelvic surgery. And um, in which cases would it be interesting? It would be interesting in cases where there are no anatomical planes which you can follow. So in locally advanced rectal cancer, for example, or when there are suspected extra mesorectal lymph nodes, or when the anatomy is distorted, and maybe even for all TATME cases because urethral injuries have been described. Maybe it's interesting in the learning curve uh, for, to, to avoid these kinds of injuries. Um, so this is a, uh, an example of a case in which there the pointer is not working. Do you have another? Oh, great. So here you see uh, a recurrent rectal cancer after partial mesorectal excision with ingrowth in the sacrum. So in this case, uh, for a, a curative resection, we anteriorly we can follow the anatomical planes, but dorsally we have to follow an extra anatomical plane. And in these, especially in these cases, it will be interesting because nowadays we do this with C-arm imaging, and this is associated with inaccuracy and uh, radiation exposure, and it's time consuming. But with stereotactic navigation, this, this w might improve the quality. So what problem, what specific challenges are there in pelvic surgery, in rectal surgery? Well, this, the challenge is that we make the CT scan or the MRI scan in supine position, but we operate in lithotomy. So the scan that we use during, um, uh, the preoperative scan that we use, might differ from the, the position interoperatively. So is there a, a change in the position of the pelvic organs? Is there a change in sacral tilt, for example? Is there a change in the position of the markers of the fiducials? So this we decided to investigate. Uh, and another aspect, if you use pneumoperitoneum, does this affect uh, the, the, the position of the interpelvic organs or the fiducials? So the aim of this study was to investigate the feasibility of the stereotactic pelvic navigation and to assess its accuracy. So we did four subsequent tests with four human anatomic specimens, and we scanned them in different directions, uh, supine lithotomy, with or without pneumoperitoneum, to assess these factors that we discussed, the sacral tilt, the, the position of the pelvic organs, the position of the fiducials, and we performed stereotactic navigation, of course. 
So in the first two cad cadavers, the first uh, two human anatomic specimens, we investigated supine position with lithotomy, with or without pneumoperitoneum. In the second, uh, in, the, in the last two cadavers, we tested several different supine positions with several different uh, hip flexion, hip abduction um, positions. So in the first uh, two cadavers, we tested uh, the, for example, the distance of the fiducials to the sacral promontory in the sagittal plane uh, with Azirx, and we measured the angle of the sacrum and compared these angles and these distances between the positions. For the, the next two cadavers, we had a better way of analyzing this by means of a software slicer in w with which we could mark uh, uh, anatomical um, positions in the pelvis. So here, for example, you see a marking near the, uh, the origin of the urethra, near the prostate, the prostate. And here you see the, where the ureter enters the bladder, the left ureter. So we uh, marked six of these anatomical positions in all the different CT scans to compare whether there was a difference uh, of these positions in distance to the sacral promontory. So whether there was a change in position of these points. And we also did this with the fiducials. We marked all the fiducials, as you can see here, to assess the distance to the sacred promontory to see if they move. And we also, for the sacred tilt, the last, uh, uh, the last factor, we, um, uh, we started by measuring the angle between, between the line from the sacred promontory to the distal coccyx with the horizontal axis, but we saw that the coccyx moves. So we, we decided to take this plane and to uh, compare the, this angle with the horizontal angle to assess the sacred tilt. So what we saw in the first cadaver was that if you change to pneumoperitoneum, name, if you insufflate the cadaver, is that there's a change in the midline fiducials. This was one of the results. You see a slight uh, change in sacral angle, and you don't see any change um, in the uh, interpelvic organ position. Here you see, for example, the change in the fiducials. When there's no pneumo, the distance is less from the sacred promontory. When there's pneumo peritoneum, the distance is, um, is higher. So in the second cadaver, we also saw that the fiducials change when you change the position from spine to lithotomy. This cadaver had a higher fat percentage. So maybe uh, uh, fatter patients um, are more likely between positions, uh, it is more likely that the fiducials change. So not only pneumoperitoneum induced change in the position of the fiducials, but also the change in position. So from these first two cadavers, we concluded that if you are doing this technique in a non-hybrid operation room, you need to register the position of the pelvis in supine position without any pneumo. So in the scanning position where you scan the patient in and that there was no change in the position of the pelvic organs and there was a slight sacral tilt. So for the uh, uh, last two cadavers, we tested these uh, positions and we found that um, for the majority of, uh, of uh, anatomical positions in the pelvis, there was almost no change. So no change in the intrapelvic uh, anatomical points between the different positions. And this we saw for the fiducius, we saw quite a large change for the fiducials, like we saw in the first cadaver. So it, 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 it uh, confirmed the results in the first cadavers. Like you see here, there's a change in fiducials also without pneumo. And, and with respect to the sacred tilt, we saw that the sacred tilt angle changes less than one degree. So um, then we performed also uh, several navigations, and we saw that when using the Zigo image with lithotomy and pneumoperitoneum, we had a, a very uh, good uh, registration error. And uh, also using the supine CT in which we scanned the patient with the leg straight, we had a, a good registration error. So this was associated with a good accuracy. And here you can see that we could navigate to the aortic bifurcation, that we could navigate to the uh, origin of the AMI, that we could navigate to the urethra. So, ladies and gentlemen, to conclude, 
uh, accurate stereotactic pelvic navigation seems feasible uh, for the hybrid OR, uh, but also for the non-hybrid OR, if you take into account uh, the, that the position of the fiducials change, so that you need to register the patient in the three-dimensional OR before you put them in lithotomy. So what is the future for um, stereotactic navigation? Well, uh, the hybrid ORs are likely to improve the accuracy of uh, stereotactic navigation. And of course, if we can delineate, like the neurosurgeons delineate the tumor, if we can delineate not only the tumor, but also the mesorectum and the ureters and the urethra, and maybe the nerves, because in this movie, I'll show you preliminary results from, our, from a study that is yet un unpublished in 20 volunteers, uh, in which we see that in the majority, in the vast majority of cases, we can also see in a high definition MRI, we can see the nerves. So if we can use this intraoperatively, it's easier to navigate. So here you see the mesorectum, you see the prostate, the, the ureters, you see the bladder, the ureter. But not only this you can show, we can also show the nerves, the sympathetic trunk, the sacral nerve, the obturator nerve, and the hypogastric nerve and plexus. So this is probably the future of stereotactic navigation. So not only thanks to the authors of this study, but also thanks to the people who made this possible in the lab. And uh, yes, thank you for your attention.